Well, hello, Rock the JVM fans. This is Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to tell you how Akka HTTP can work with JSON manipulation libraries. This is a subject that's very popular with setting up HTTP servers, and in this video, I'm going to tell you how Akka HTTP will deal with it. So I'm going to assume that you know the basics of Akka HTTP. We're not going to discuss how Akka HTTP works. If you need to dive into the basics, we have other videos here on the Rock the JVM channel. And um, to be clear, we are going to work with the Akka HTTP server aspects, and uh, we are going to design a very simple server that will deal with JSON very easily. So this video will also assume that you need to work with JSON while setting up your Akka HTTP server. Now, as always, I'll recommend that you code with me in this video, and whenever you need to refresh your memory on these topics, just refer back to this video to its written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog, or to the details that you can also find in the description below, including how to set up the appropriate libraries. And in this video, I'm going to show you no less than three different libraries for manipulating JSON inside an Akka HTTP server. So without further ado, let's get to our code. So I've created a simple object here where I'm going to also add a main method because we're going to spin up um, at least one HTTP server. And to be able to work with Akka HTTP and with the libraries that we're going to use in this video, go to your build.sbt file and add the Akka uh, actor typed library and Akka HTTP library. And I have Akka version 265, so this is the core Akka actors library. So you can add com type safe Akka percent percent Akka actor typed percent and this Akka version 265. And I'm also going to add the Akka HTTP core library. So com type safe Akka percent percent Akka HTTP percent and the version for Akka HTTP is completely different. Akka HTTP is versioned differently. And the version that I'm going to use for this video is 10.2.0, which is the latest Akka HTTP library at the moment of this recording. You can also find the library definitions in the description of this video or inside the article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog. Now, Let's assume that you've added these to your build SBT and um, after you've added them, click the little icon here to refresh your build SBT definition or the pop-up at the bottom right hand side in IntelliJ asking you to import changes to make sure that you have downloaded the appropriate libraries that we can use for this video. And um, if you need some more time, just pause the video until you've set those up. Now, for this video, we will create a simple HTTP service which exposes an HTTP post endpoint. So assume we're working on a uh, some kind of an online dating app. So a central data structure will be something that resembles a person. So I'm going to define a case class that I'm going to call person with a name as a string and an age as an int. Now we intend to add such persons to our online dating database and uh, return events that have a unique identifier as a and a timestamp. So I'm going to also add a case class Let's call this user added with an ID, which is a unique string and a timestamp, which is a long in the form of milliseconds in Unix timestamp format. So let's assume that we are working on some kind of user creation service. So a user creation endpoint of this online dating platform, which exposes a post endpoint, which takes a person uh, as encoded uh, in JSON format, adds it to our database, which in our case will be a dummy implementation, and then the server will reply back with a JSON string which encodes a user added data structure. So we need to be able to serialize and deserialize these case classes between the JSON payload, which is a string, and our internal representations here. So let's create a simple Akka HTTP server that does everything but the JSON part so that we can focus on JSON in just a couple of minutes. So first we need to set up an actor system that will back the Akka streams necessary to hold the Akka HTTP routing service. So I'm going to define an implicit val, let's call this system, as actor system. And I'm going to use the Akka actor typed version. And uh, the actor system doesn't need to have any specific behavior. So I'm going to type it with behaviors plural. So make sure you have behaviors. And I'm going to use empty make sure you import Akka actor typed Scala DSL behaviors. And uh, I'm going to name this actor system, let's call this Akka 
HTTP JSON. So this will be the actor system that will back the routing um, logic of this server. And I'm going to define a route as a route. I'm pretty sure you know what a route is in uh, the Aka HTTP server DSL. So I'm going to import route from the Scala DSL package. And the directive that I'm going to use for this particular server is going to be a path and the post directive, which I'm going to combine. So I'm going to say path and the path function here is only uh, available if we import the directives package. So I'm going to import Aka HTTP Scala DSL server directives with a capital D dot underscore. All right, so after you've imported the directives everything package, you now have access to all these uh, functions here that will act as a small DSL. So I'm going to use the path directive that will match a path. So I'm going to uh, just imagine that for this dating platform, if I'm creating a small microservice, I'm going to have an API slash, let's call this create user or something like that, or API slash user. Okay, notice that the slash here is in between these strings because these strings are implicitly converted into path matchers behind the scenes. You don't need to care about that, but uh, just be aware that this slash is not available for the string type. And uh, I'm also going to add an AND operator. So this is an ampersand that will combine two directives into one. So I'm going to use the POST directive. And after you've done that, so if you say path API slash user and post, this will be an HTTP request matcher. So if your Aka HTTP server receives an HTTP request that is a post request over the, AP, over the path API slash user, then this directive will be matched and uh, we will need to handle whatever uh, we want to do with the HTTP response that we might want to create. And I'm going to simply complete with a string like, yep, roger that. So if we get an HTTP request at the path API slash user for which the HTTP method is a post, then I'm going to reply with a 200 OK HTTP uh, status and the payload is going to be this little string and inside main I'm going to simply spin up an HTTP server so I'm going to say HTTP which I'm going to need to import from the Scala DSL package new server at and I'm going to use localhost and at port 8080 or 8081 you can choose whatever and I'm going to simply say bind route and after you've done that, then Aqua HTTP will spin up an uh, HTTP server for which the routing logic is the one that I've written here. And at this moment, you're ready to start your HTTP server. So I'm going to start it and uh, open a terminal window in the meantime. So uh, notice that you have Aqua HTTP JSON started here and uh, we can add we can start a terminal window and um, simply send some post requests to the server to make sure that it works. So I'm going to use curl dash, dash x post dash capital H. So this is the content type. So I'm going to say content type application.json. Now my terminal here just uh, auto completes with my little test here. We are going to also see that in a few minutes and dash D you can simply say whatever. And the path that I'm going to, or the server that I'm going to uh, post here is localhost or HTTP slash slash localhost 8081 API user. And the reply here is, yep, roger that. So this is the curl version. I also like to use a small uh, convenience uh, command here called HTTP, which is from the HTTP uh, package. So I'm going to see simply say HTTP post localhost 8081 API user. And this HTTP command receives the payload from the standard input. So I'm going to go to the beginning and I'm going to say echo and I'm going to add a string here, whatever. 
and I'm going to pipe that to the HTTP command. So uh, if you hit on that, you will uh, you will get the same response. Yep, Roger that. But the HTTP response is much more nicely formatted. It also contains the HTTP headers of the response and so on and so forth. So I usually prefer using the HTTP command. I'm going to also add the uh, the link to HTTP so that you can install it on your computer in uh, to the uh, description of this video. So you can use this as well. But curl should work in almost any situation. So I'm going to use both, you can use either, okay? Now, we have a simple server here already started up, and um, now we can get into the meat of this video, which is how to handle JSON into our little server. So in our little dating app, we said that we want to handle a JSON payload, which describes a person, and we want to reply with a JSON payload signifying a user added event. So um, I'm going to show you three different JSON manipulation libraries that you can use with Aqua HTTP, and I'm going to start with Spray JSON. Spray JSON is one of the go-to libraries for Aqua HTTP, which is also maintained by the Aqua team. And if you want to add Spray JSON into your build SBT, you will need to add that under Aqua HTTP because it's versioned alongside Aqua HTTP. Again, I'm going to give you the build SBT definitions in the description of this video, which you can also find in the article uh, corresponding to this video. So com type safe Aqua percent percent Aqua HTTP spray JSON and percent, and you can pass in the same version that you added for Aqua HTTP, which in our case is 10.2.0. So after you've added that, you will need to be able to automatically convert a person and a user added or any other case class that you might want to support to and from JSON. So there are some steps that you will need to perform so that this conversion happens almost magically. So this, the first step is that you will need to import spray JSON. This import will be available after you've added the spray JSON library, as you saw a minute ago. So the first step is to add this library. The second step is that you will need to create a scope in uh, our case, we'll create a trade, but you can also create an object and so on and so forth, which has implicit JSON conversions for any type that you might want to support. In our case, these two case classes. So in step number two, I'm going to define a trait that I'm going to call person JSON protocol. And I'm going to extend default JSON protocol, which has some implicit methods already created inside. So I'm going to define an implicit val. I'm going to name this person format as JSON format two, and I'm going to pass person. Now my code is read here because first I've misspelled JSON format, and then the person definition is only visible inside the Aqua HTTP JSON application. So let me move those at the top. So I'm going to move them both at the top. And right now our code compiles and this person format here is an automatic conversion between the person case class and an internal JSON-like representation inside this spray JSON library. So this will be an intermediate JSON format and we need to turn that into an HTTP response or an HTTP request. And uh, we are going to do that in step number three. But first, let's also create an implicit um, JSON format for the other data type. So I'm going to say user added format, and I'm going to use JSON format two for user added. And the pattern goes like this. Whenever you want to support a case class, you would need to add an implicit val, call it whatever you want, and you will need to use JSON format n for the number of fields that your case class has. So if you had a case class with three arguments, you'd use JSON format three. We're using JSON format two because we have two fields in both case classes, all right? So this was step two. Now, in step three, you will need to add the implicit JSON converters into the scope of your route over here. So uh, if you want to use these two implicits that you've created, you will need to mix this trait into your class. So I'm going to extend person JSON 
protocol. Now, if you've defined these implicit values in an object, you will simply need to bring these implicits into scope by importing the contents of that particular object. I went the trait route, so I'm going to simply mix that into my main application. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these implicits will convert the case classes into an internal uh, representation of JSON that Spray JSON understands, but Akka HTTP doesn't understand yet. And so we will need to add some further implicits by extending or mixing in Spray JSON support in our main application. Spray JSON support will also contain some additional implicits for turning that internal representation into the requests and responses that Akka HTTP understands. So right now we've made the connection between an Akka HTTP request or response data structures and the data structures that we support here, person and user added via two implicit chains, all right? So this is what you would need to do here in step three to mix in your JSON protocol or to bring these implicits into scope and also have spray JSON support mixed into your application. Now, in uh, the final step, you will need to add some directives into the route so that the payload from the HTTP request is automatically parsed and converted into the type that you wanted to support. And for that, we will use the entity directive. An entity uh, takes a type argument t, which can also be inferred by the compiler, and you will need to pass this very weird data structure from request on marshaller t. Now, this data structure can be fetched from the as directive. So you can say as person. So when you say as person, this fetches whatever implicit converter you have had for the person type. And the compiler is automatically able to construct that via the implicit chains that we have linked in the previous steps. So entity as person, and this directive will take another function argument from a person, which is of type person, to whatever response you might want to send to the requester. So we can say complete. So we can complete an HTTP response and uh, I can also create a JSON payload that is automatically created from the other data structure that I supported here. So user added. So I can simply say user added and I can pass in two values here for the ID and timestamp. I'm just going to use a unique identifier. So I'm going to say UUID. This is the Java unique identifier. So I'm going to import class from Java util UUID. So I'm going to say UUID random UUID to string in the current timestamp. And I'm going to simply say system dot current time millies. Okay. And when you complete with a data structure that is not directly supported by Akka HTTP, the compiler tries to turn that into an HTTP response via implicit conversions. And by following the previous three steps, um, the compiler is able to do that. And so you can simply complete with your own data structure. Cool. So right now we have added our server and uh, we can restart the application and we can simply test it out. So now the server is active. And so I will pass in a post request. So I'm going to say curl dash X post dash H content type application JSON dash D. And here I will pass in a person definition in the form of JSON. So I'm going to use simple quotes here so that I don't have to escape all the quotes. I'm going to say name Colin Daniel age is 99 and closing the curly brace and then closing the simple quote. All right. And uh, this is basically it. We can no URL specified. I will need to use localhost 8081 at the path API slash user. So notice that we have a JSON here, which was the HTTP server response. So this is an automatic JSON conversion from our data type user added to the JSON representation. If you like HTTP, you can also do that. I can copy this simple string over here. So I'm going to say echo 
this thing, and then I can pipe that to HTTP post localhost 8081 API user. So notice that the HTTP utility here has formatted the response a little bit more decently here with all the headers here and the JSON reply. So notice that our server is now able to automatically convert to JSON and from JSON automatically by the spray JSON library. So this was the first library that I wanted to show you with a little bit of the explanation of what happens behind the scenes. The next libraries are going to be easier to integrate and understand because you now have the fundamentals. Now, the second library that I want to show you is Circe, which is very, very popular within the type level ecosystem with Scala. However, it only decently works with type level libraries such as cats. So porting Circe to Aqua HTTP is not straightforward, but thankfully a really nice developer called Heiko Seeberger created a very nice uh, set of libraries and uh, I'm going to link to the repo in the description to this video and uh, this repo contains a bunch of JSON libraries for Aka HTTP so JSON port JSON libraries ported to Aka HTTP just in case spray JSON here is not enough for you you can also dive into the code of the libraries it's really not that long just a few implicit wrappers over the given functionality of their existing libraries, including Circe and other JSON libraries, of course. And uh, the JSON library support for Circe ships in its own distribution. So you will need to go to your build SBT and you will need to add this definition here, d.heikoseeberger and percent percent aka HTTP Circe. So this is the separate release for Aka HTTP with a Circe support. And you will need to add another version here and the version that I uh, have added for this video is 1.34.0, which is the latest at the moment of this recording. And uh, after you've added that and refreshed your build SBT dependencies, you should be ready to use Circe with Aka HTTP. And here's how you would do it. First, you will need to simply shamelessly copy the server that we added earlier. And I'm going to name this Aka HTTP Circe. And I'm going to remove all these definitions here. And um, notice that without those definitions, the code doesn't compile anymore because the implicit conversions cannot be found anymore. But there are two different steps that you will need to follow in order to add source support for uh, Aqua HTTP. So the first step is to uh, add the uh, similar spray JSON support, but for Circe. And the Circe support is called fail fast extends fail fast Circe support. So fail fast Circe support is also um, a class that will contain some implicit conversions between the HTTP requests and responses that Aqua HTTP understands and the internal representations that Circe understands. And uh, in order to turn our data structures into the formats that Circe understands, we will need to add a second step which is to import IO Circe generic auto. So once you've added IO Circe generic auto, uh, this package will automatically create some implicit conversions from your case classes into the format that Circe understands. The technical term is implicit encoders and decoders. And uh, this package works via implicit macros and these macros will automatically generate some additional code such that your uh, case classes are automatically encodable and decodable into and from the internal format of Circe. And with this additional extension here with fail fast Circe support, that internal representation is now mappable to Aka HTTP formats. So that was a mouthful. So the only two steps that you need to follow is to extend this thing and to import IO Circe generic auto. Now, if you cannot find IO Circe generic auto, you will need to also add the Circe library into your build SBT. So you can, where, where do I have Circe? So you can add the Circe dependencies here in your build SBT. I have IO Circe, you have Circe core, Circe generic and Circe parser, and the Circe version is 0.12.3. So this is the version that I'm going to 
uh, use at this moment. Of course, I'm going to add the entire definition to the description of this video, and uh, you don't uh, really need to care about where I got all of these dependencies. Just need to paste them into your build SBT. So after you've done these two steps, then this new server will actually be able to be run just as it is. So I'm going to, uh, in main, change the port to 8082 so that I start this server as well. And I'm going to right click on this object and I'm going to run it. And after I've run it, I also have an additional server here, which I can safely test in my terminal. So I'm going to simply copy the previous command. And instead of localhost 8081, I'm going to use 8082. And I have an additional JSON response, which is a proof that the, the second server works correctly as well. I'm also going to try with HTTP and it works just as well. So notice that integrating Cersei is much easier with this additional library import into your build SBT. So that was Cersei with Aka HTTP. Now, the third library that I'm going to show you here for this video is the famous Jackson, which you might have heard from the Java world. So Jackson uh, prides itself uh, for being the default JSON for Java library. Fortunately, we're now warmed up and ready to import it from the same repository or for from the same um, where, th where is that from from the same place. So you can simply add this definition into your build SBT, the Heiko Seeberger Aka HTTP Jackson with the same version that you used for Aka HTTP Cersei. And integrating Jackson is much, much simpler. You can now simply copy this server, paste it here, and I'm going to name this Aka HTTP Jackson. And instead of extending fail fast Cersei support, I'm going to simply say extends Jackson support. And I will need to import Jackson support and just remove the import. So this is the single step that you will need to do to turn an HTTP request or response that uh, uh, Aka HTTP understands into Jackson. And the rest of the code is completely identical. And uh, just to prove how this server works, I'm going to add another port here. I'm going to change this to 8083, and I'm going to run this third server. Okay, so now I have Aka HTTP Jackson here running here in IntelliJ, and I'm going to test this in my terminal with the same curl and I'm going to use this new port, 8083. And notice that we have this additional JSON response here from the server. And I'm going to also try with HTTP. And sure as well, you have a valid response. So there you have it, folks. Three different JSON manipulation libraries integrated into Aka HTTP. I hope they're useful. And if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel for more videos like this. And follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh updates on upcoming material. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave your comments. I read every single one. And uh, just check out the Rock the JVM website. We have tons of material like this. And we dive really deep into Aka HTTP into one of our courses. Now, until next time, I'm Daniel, signing off. <laughs>